It is freezes only in first outpost in Asia. Yes. Is there a reason they, that Seoul was selected as, as the spot? They look for cities that have a very rich sort of cultural landscape. It could be music and writing and uh, film. So, Seoul. The infrastructure for art is, is quite strong. Whether you're an art lover, an art collector, or an artist yourself, September is the month you want to be in Seoul because you're going to want to visit Free Seoul, one of the world's most prestigious art events. Now in its second year and held in conjunction with the Korea International Art Fair, it is the place to be for those wanting to be a part of the thriving art scene in Asia. Free Soul opened last year to great success and is the London-based contemporary art platform's first and only fair in Asia. Our globalist today is its art director, Patrick Lee. Thank you for coming on to The Globalists. I know it's a very busy time for you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's a pleasure to be here. So let's talk about the free soul. I mean, you're just weeks away. Um, so are you excited? Um, should we be excited? What's so exciting about Free Soul? Well, first of all, thank you for having me, uh, Free Soul. Uh, we're very excited. We are weeks away, so it's getting to be crunch time. But uh, very excited. Uh, we had a fantastic debut last year. I'm very excited to show the audience here in Asia, you know, some of the best art from the world. Mm. If you could characterize Free Soul, I mean, for people who are not um, very familiar with what Free Soul is, what would you describe it as? Well, Free Soul, uh, in its most basic form, um, is an art fair. The art fair uh, showcases a selection of galleries from around the world, mm -hmm. and these galleries select artworks from um, artists from their program. That's mm -hmm. the very basic mm -hmm. uh, function of an art fair. But mm. Freeze, I think, is unique. Uh, Freeze started as a magazine mm. in 1991, yeah. uh, and to this day remains one of the most important sort of periodicals for a sort of critical cultural discourse. And from that community, the first art fair sort of arose. Freeze London at the time was in 2003, so it's celebrating its 20th anniversary this October. Mm. And after that, New York, Freeze Masters in 2012, uh, LA in 2019, and then last year, Freeze Seoul. Seoul. So, in a way, Freeze Seoul specifically is part of this lineage. Um, it's part of the uh, community from this art world, this sector of the art world. And it's fascinating because um, that community really grew organically, mm. I would say. Mm. It's consisting of the artists, of course, the galleries we work for, the collectors, the patrons, the museums, the writers. I mean, it's a fascinating sort of mix, and that's really the, the community that we sort of cater to, and, and Free Soul is, is, is the Asia mm -hmm. sort of um, outpost for Freeze, and it's, it's been very exciting. Yeah. Um, it is um, Freeze's uh, only and first um, outpost in Asia. Yes. Uh, is there a reason they, that Seoul was selected as, as the spot? Well, um, I think they've been looking to Asia for some time, and they've been doing their due diligence, and they always look for cities, my understanding is a little before my time, but uh, they look for cities that have a very rich sort of cultural landscape, you know, not just the fine arts per se, but it could be music and writing and uh, film. And, mm -mm. and so, of course, Seoul, uh, I think, is, is a fantastic place. Uh, the artistic talent coming here is, 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 is really diverse, really compelling. Uh, so I think number one is that sort of depth of artistic practice and the history is here. Uh, for fine art in particular, I think Seoul and Korea has a very rich uh, history, you know, post-war to the contemporary. I think uh, the, the talent is, is amazing, uh, the infrastructure is, is really good. Um, other things secondary, I think it's a fun city, logistically mm. also easy to get around as a hub. These are sort of secondary factors. I don't think there was one 
factor that was yeah. the only reason, but I think the amalgamation of all these uh, made it a great choice. It's really a validation, I think, of, of the cultural landscape here. Mm -hmm. I think they made a great choice. I think that artistic ecosystem that you talked about is not as well known outside of Seoul as, as much as, you know, Seoul is known for the cosmopolitan city, the business areas, maybe the palaces, you know, recently because of some of the K-pop areas, but yes. Not really in terms of the artistic worlds, yes. um, the presence they have in the artistic world. Yes, yes. Is that something that you know, Free Soul can maybe um, make up for? I think Free Soul can be a great platform to sort of advocate and, and to really introduce people to what's already here. The artistic practice, the infrastructure is here. It's really um, just about people having the opportunity to more engage deeply mm -hmm. with the talent that's here. I think for Asia, Korea and Seoul um, has a wonderful art ecosystem, you know, and it's been developing organically mm. over decades, you know, and I really feel like it's very strong. If you compare Korea with other countries in Asia, like the amount of museums, the amount of like galleries, the amount of writers, schools, I mean, the infrastructure for art is, is quite strong. The collecting culture, I think, is quite strong. Recently, um, the temporary art world is really engaging, you know, mm. with the global art world. And that's really a factor of, you know, a lot of talented people sort of doing their practice, working hard, articulating in a, in a very sort of intelligent way on behalf of the great artistic practice. Mm -hmm. So I think that's been a process that's been happening for decades. I think the timing now, Free Soul, is really a validation, I would say, of what's happening here. So for me, if we could be a platform to, to expose a great audience to what's happening here, I, I feel like that would be a very fulfilling mm -hmm. role for me. It, it really does seem like everything's coming together, um, and, and free soul is maybe one of the things that are coming out of this recognition. You talk about the, this being the first year. The second uh, free soul was the first year that you've, you're launching Artistic World, but it is our second uh, free soul. So you have one under your belt already. <laughs> Successful one, I, I, from what I've heard. Mm -hmm. um, do you think it was a success, and what were your, um, I guess, lessons learned? Um, from the first one that you're going to apply to the second one? I would say for a first year, people sensed, you know, the, uh, the dynamism of the city. Uh, yeah, this very frenetic sort of energy, I, I think, was, was there and the potential was there. People were really inspired by the city. So I think if you ask most people, um, it's word of mouth. People saying we had a great time in Seoul. Mm -hmm. We had a great time at the first. So I'm so thankful for I that. I have heard people talk about Free Seoul in, in a positive way. So, but from my perspective, of course, as director, I always looking at the things that can be better and mm -hmm. uh, and um, and what we want to improve. So I think there been a ton of improvements, um, many that you won't see. It's really for the galleries, mm -hmm. logistical things, which we're always trying to to improve for them, uh, but also how people engage with the city, very positive way. Because last year. Many didn't know Freeze, so I would mm. ask in museums or like, you know, can we, you know, like highlight a show of yours? Can we do something together? Can we open the doors of your spaces? And people, some were like, very like uh, enthusiastic, and some were like, not sure. But this year, completely different. So mm. I think this year, really, um, the conversation is very positive. I think the city is really going to be uh, embracing this event. Also, the government, uh, mm. the Seoul City government, the Ministry of Culture, Tourism just very uh, generous uh, and uh, we have great discussions that are helping us a lot, supporting us. So I think the fact that this can be the anchor of a, a broader event, let's say, um, Seoul Art Week is uh, something which the government wants to push. It's tied to the architecture biennale, there's fashion week, you know, and I'm so happy that Free Seoul played a little role in terms of, you know, sort of like coalescing this and think this could be a fantastic event. So uh, it's a progression, you know, we can always do better. I'm just very happy with the plans this year and, and to really showcase the city in a deeper level to the future. So hopefully we can solidify our positioning as, mm. a, as an important uh, art fair in the region. So for that week, if you are even just in Seoul for other purposes, you would know that free Seoul is happening. I think probably. so. I think so. I think, um, again, uh, the government's been very uh, supportive. I think there will be very soon, uh, you'll see a lot of sort of uh, references to, to the fair. Not just us, there's a, another fair called Kiof, which mm. has been running for 20 years. Yep. It's run by the Gallery Association. We run uh, concurrently at the same time. Uh, and of course, the Architecture Biennale, I think, is quite important. Uh, Cho byung Su, the director, I think, yeah. is truly like a philosopher. So I'm very excited mm. to see what he does. Uh, so I think it'll be a, a fantastic week. 
So it's a very artistic, I think art so. oral yes. type of um, so. mood that's going to descend so. upon Seoul. And a lot of people are visiting from the region and from the states. Uh, so we're very excited. Uh, also from China, mainland China. I think last year we didn't have that audience because of COVID. This year it's a, it looks like it's going to be a lot different. So we hope uh, wow. cautiously optimistic. Yes. Well, looking forward to it. Thank hope that so happens. Thank you very much. Let's talk a little bit about you. Um, you were the executive director of Gallery Hyundai. Gallery Hyundai is one of the most prestigious art galleries in Korea. You were on a very prestigious track already. Why did you move to Free Seoul? Well, that's a great question. I'm, I'm very thankful for the time at uh, Gallery Hyundai. It's a gallery that's been up for over 50 years. They've worked with fantastic artists and estates. That ex experience really allowed me the opportunity to interact sort of on a different level on behalf of the artists with amazing institutions around the world and also art fairs. Mm. Um, they were active in Freeze Art Fairs, recently got back into the Basel Art Fairs. So I was a, it was a space that I was actually quite familiar with. And how Free Soul happened, um, the galleries are determined by a committee of peers. It's mm. called the Gallery Committee. And uh, initially I was in discussions to uh, be on the committee to advise for um, Asian galleries, and I got to know certain people. I knew people from Freeze, and mm. I was just sharing my thoughts about These were your people. People I knew, yeah, yeah because, yeah. you know, in, in a way, with the gallery and the art fair, the, the people you, you deal with are, are quite similar, but it's just sort of a different hat that you wear. I mean, the ecosystem is like the same players, and they were looking for a director, and I was giving them uh, some uh, suggestions even, like, I was like, oh, this person could be interesting, and they were just like, for, for whatever reason, and then I thought, um, with the blessing of, 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 of Gallery yeah. Hyundai, of course, was like, well, uh, you know, this could be, you know, a, a great platform to mm. serve as a bridge, you know, globally to Korea. I felt like that was a place I was comfortable with. They announced it during uh, Freeze uh, London when I was actually in the booth working for Gallery Hyundai. They announced <laughs> it, so it was a bit odd then. But uh, yeah, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very thankful. Yeah. Do you have a mission, you know, in terms of as you, um, you know, join Free Soul? Do you feel like there's something that that must be uniquely um, Patrick Lee mm -hmm. that I bring to the table and I contribute to Free Soul? Oh well, I, I I don't know if I could say that, you know, per se. I think there's so much that can be done. The uh, wealth of knowledge of, of programming and running the fair has been built over 20 years at Free, so I'm just thankful to be a part of that. Of course. I have aspirations for free mm -hmm. Seoul and, and what we can do for the, not just Seoul and Korea, but also for Asia. So of course I have a great ideas for supporting the galleries and the practices of the region. I hope to do some creative programming and uh, yeah, there are a lot of ideas and I think Freeze is a great place because it moves quickly, they, they love new ideas and I think we execute quite fast. So I think hopefully, you know, in the years to come, uh, mm. we can continue to increase the programming uh, to make it a, a great platform. Mm. So this is very much a beginning for you. Very beginning, second phase, uh, second year really, we're still kind of baby, baby fair, steps, I would say, baby yeah. steps, you know, but with the, with the fair that has expectations because uh, they've been around. But uh, I do think, yeah, we're still in that sort of very early stage. So we really want to make an impact. We want to work very hard mm. to get to a level where, you know, we're so, sort of really ingrained in the, in the infrastructure mm. in Asia um, and, and serve as that platform. But one of the things that I saw in one of your interviews is talking about the young collectors in Korea. People, that is something that also people are not as much aware of, I think, mm -hmm. um, as they um, are aware of other things about Korea. What are you talking about? Are there really young collectors that are visibly um, distinguished enough mm -hmm. compared to other markets in mm -hmm. Asia? Collecting culture in Korea is a deep one. They've been collecting for decades, uh, very well known uh, collectors of you know, Western contemporary art, uh, all facets. And I think you are seeing a generational shift, of course, those big collectors still there and very important. 
their children now also getting mm -hmm. into art, but I think you are seeing a different group, a demographic of collectors because they are so much more tuned to culture in general. You know, why is the fashion market so mm -hmm. incredibly strong? I mean, maybe it's because they, well, they have income, they can't buy houses. I'm not sure exactly mm -hmm. what compels them to want to collect. Um, I think there are many different facets. There's not one answer. Um, you have a wide array of the younger collectors. There was a trend recently, I think I might have been discussing it about um, yeah, the auction markets and like yeah. how quickly these uh, younger generations were buying art, almost like stocks, you know? Yeah. So I thought, you know, in a way, I don't think negatively about that. I think um, everyone has their reasons to buy uh, if they have the income. But if a fraction of those collectors actually, you know, enjoy engaging with art and can go into the system supporting primary galleries and supporting artists, become a patron, I'm all for that, really. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's just, uh, yeah, it's just a unique, time of you know development right now of the younger generation their sense of income and and the cultural offerings uh facing them and appreciation so i think it's more of a it's a bigger social political question i think but uh True. but art is just one part of it i think yeah. so but it, it's interesting that art is a part of it yes. because you know it, you you it's a question of choice yes. of a younger generation in terms of how they want to uh, consume and what, what what they're interested in, and you know yes. you're talking about art, but it's like whether they go to the theater yes, or they yes, go yes. to a concert or whatever it is. I mean, they're the consumption of art. You're not talking about a very small number of young people. You're, you're talking about a much more wider yes. um, interest in art. Yes, that's true, and I think it, it is is broad. That's why I never there's so many different types of art exhibitions. There's so many types of shows. There's so many types of art, right? So I rarely judge, you know, like uh, what's good or bad because that's a very subjective thing. If it, something gives you pleasure, you like to support, hang it in your house. I think that's a wonderful thing. If it engages you or your family or your kids or whatever, I think that's a fantastic thing. Engaging with culture in general, I think that trend is wonderful. And if a small portion can become important collector who likes to go to freeze or sees these types of galleries, which is also just his own sort of small part of the whole art scene, all the better, I think. Mm -hmm. So uh, so I think generally I, I look at it very positively, the, the notion that people actually um, appreciate culture mm -hmm. and, and get some joy or passion out of it. I think that's yeah. always a good thing. So the visitors to this um, free soul would be a younger generation? I mean, of course, it would be the more seasoned um, professionals, but you see a, a young generation of people who are interested in coming and just seeing what the what is available and what is out there? I think the audience is quite diverse. And I think if you talk to some foreign galleries, they, they actually are intrigued about meeting this so-called Gen Z or younger mm. generation, you know. And of course, <laughs> we do our best to educate yeah. and we do programming and we try to uh, yeah, serve as a great platform. Um, I don't know if I could say that the audience is younger per se. I think that's a hard generalization to make. Uh, but I think you definitely see that generation that's interested in art. So of course, I hope that they come to visit Kiev and they come mm -hmm. to visit Freeze and engage and learn. Um, that would be a wonderful thing. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about um, the artists themselves. I mean, there must be a um, cropping up of young artists like Hana Wu and other artists to sort of keep this interest alive. How would you characterize the art scene for the art among the artists in mm -hmm. Korea? Well, I think it's a great time. I think uh, there's so much talent here and really a product of many things. I think it's their predecessors, you know, the contemporary mm -hmm. artists that you, the public might know already, like the wholesale type people, yeah. Nikki Lee, uh, Che Jong Ha, that, those types uh, who very articulate, Lee Bull, who's yeah. like gained you know global fame, uh, rightfully so, incredibly talented, incredibly articulate. So they are really um, very generous, I think, uh, with the advocacy and their mentorship. That's mm -mm. From, the, from the artistic talent perspective, the schooling. A lot of um, young artists have the chance now to study abroad, which from the that happened from what the early '90s. They were able to do that. So I think that the discourse is really helping the artistic practice in a, in a different way. So I think the talent is there. And I think on the same token, I think you have a lot of people who are looking at Korea, you know, not just the Koreans or the Korean American curators who are mm. at great institutions. You know, now mm. they're cutting their teeth and they're getting to a level of influence. Like, um, yeah, like Virginia Moon from LACMA, like Dorian Chung from M+, Unji Ju SF MoMA, Christine Kim. I mean, I can, we can name many. Yeah. And then also the um, academics now, like the Joan Key types mm -hmm. who are writing very critical, important things. Um, so all that 
really coming together, you know, and I think that's when I talk about the infrastructure being very strong and supportive. It's a natural progression, but of course you need that artistic talent, you yeah. know, and I think the Korean artists are confident, um, smart, and uh, feel that they can execute you know, their ideas. And now they have a platform where people, more people, can see and engage on a, on a, on a bigger scale. Uh, also, um, when you talk about artists, you know, that that is a big part of the artistic ecosystem. And, uh, and Free Soul this year has an artistic award um, to Hannah Wu. Hannah and I nice. saw photos of um, some of her work. And her work is quite interesting in, in the way that what she wants to express. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Tell us a little bit about Hannah. I think she's a fantastic artist. And, and first of all, uh, launching the Free Soul Artist Award this year, was I'm very happy about that. And I, for us, this one really was focused on promoting an artist of a certain part of their career, I would say, mm. you know? So it's, a, it's really as a platform to, so I would say mid-career. Yeah, I would say early, early to mid-career mid uh, career artist. And it was based on a certain theme. It was a, it was a wonderful process. Um, the amount of artists pool that the jury was looking at was nominated by a fantastic committee of nominators, yeah. uh, of curators, and the theme was on a certain theme, on time and uh, the aspects of time. And, and Hana Wu uh, in particular, I think she's a wonderful artist. Uh, she's well known for her use of uh, fabric, uh, exploring issues like femininity and uh, sort of um, the body, and I think her presentation here is going to be fantastic. This award allows her to create a new work. It's a commission. Mm. You'll see the work at the fair. It's be, it'll be hanging from the ceilings on large I'm scale. I'm looking forward to it. And I think really, I hope that uh, people can uh, engage with it. Uh, sultry, it's, uh, I think it's also poetic. It's yeah. visceral. Um, and I think it just, yeah, it's a very beautiful work. So I, I, I hope that not only people seeing the work at the fair, but also on our platform, and um, you know other vehicles for you know engaging with the artists uh, help her to engage with a broader audience. But um, I am very very excited for the mm. launch of the award. As you talk about you know all these Korean American um, curators and all these um, international galleries and fairs, a lot of galleries are rushing, and it seems like they are rushing to set up galleries in Seoul. Mm. Um, what is that about? I think. Yeah. The market is, 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 is strong enough to warrant uh, to mm. having a base here. And I think um, there could be many factors. Logistically, having shows here, having uh, clients who can interact with a local entity might yeah. be easier than having to you know, deal with a foreign entity with uh, remittance and things. I mean, there's many factors, I think. Well, I, I look at it as a positive. I think it's the more exposure um, that these galleries have to what's happening in Asia and Korea. It also gives opportunities for them to see mm. a great Korean artist and also possibly a, be a platform outside of Korea as well. So mm. yeah, it's generally a positive, I yeah. think. When you see all these different factors um, that sort of work together and to create this ecosystem that we talked about before in terms of market, um, what stage is it in? Do you see the potential for more growth or do you think it's already matured? Um, because you know, it, it's, it's a scene that hasn't, didn't really catch a lot of global attention before. Yeah. I think the inflection point is definitely going upwards, I, th I would say, you know, uh, we're definitely nowhere near sort of like the maturation phase, I think, because I still feel many people are visiting Korea or knowing what's happening here for the first time or just very in the stages of like, oh, this is very intriguing. Mm -hmm. There's a compulsion to want to learn more. And I think that's just the process. So I think um, anything that can get people to see what's happening here. I mean, Biennale has always been strong. Guangzhou mm -hmm. Biennale has been strong yeah. for, for, for decades, and it, it remains one of the strongest sort of regional Biennales. Uh, and we have three of them here, big ones, you know. The Media City is opening in September, and Busan uh, will open again. Uh, and they're very, very strong, and I think we should be confident. You know, we should be confident, uh, have a lot of pride. So I, I have no doubt that uh, people will be impressed, inspired uh, by what's happening here. So that's why I believe that a fair like Freeze or, you know, this, this, the whole notion of what's happening here, um, is, the potential is real. The feeling that Seoul is having its moment, it's deservedly so. And I'm really looking forward to, to inviting people to see what's happening here and playing a small part of that. Mm -hmm. Well, we are all very interested and very looking forward to it ourselves. So best of luck. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. And that's it for me. I will be back next week with another globalist who is putting Korea on the map. Sun Jie out.